Welcome back to Hardworking Man. We're back in the kitchen. When I did the meat stick video where I made the pepper jack cherry meat sticks, which are some of the best sticks I've ever had, I told you, I said, I got a bratwurst recipe that is so good. People that don't like brats like these. And we're going to make it today. I'm going to share it with you. I've got 20 pounds of venison, five pounds of pork butt that you just saw me cut up. I've got this seasoning. I'm going to let you know what that is. Two and a half pounds of sharp cheddar. It's high temp cheese, so it's not going to melt when we cook these down. It'll be nice chunks of cheese in the brats. And two more ingredients that we're going to put in these. And I'm telling you what, these things are the best brats you've ever had. Even if you don't like brats, you're going to want to try these. You can make them with beef. You can make them with other types of meat. We've got venison because we love hunting. We process all of our own deer, and it's a very lean meat. That's why we added the pork butt into it. So I'm going to bring you guys along. We're going to get this ground up, get the seasoning mixed in. I'll tell you what that is, and the cheese and the other two ingredients that make these things pure fire. So we're going to start. I got the Cabela's Carnivore Grinder here. When I grew up as a kid, we had a walk-in cooler at my dad's house. We had a Hobart commercial grinder. When I moved over to this side of the state, I bought a little cheap Gander Mountain meat grinder. If you're making your own food, if you're grinding meat, just do yourself a favor. Go buy one of these Cabela's Carnivore grinders. I'm not sponsored by them. They haven't ever given me or sent me anything, but this thing's legit. It's better than the Hobart commercial unit that I used as a kid. So we're going to grind, like I said, 20 pounds of venison, 5 pounds of pork butt. We're going to mix that up. I've got the fine grind plate on here. You got to have a foot pedal on this thing because you can't feed it fast enough to keep it going. This entire head with the auger and the plate, along with this ice pack, has been in the freezer so it's cold. It'll keep the meat cool. It won't heat up as it's grinding. So let's get grinding. Then we'll get the seasoning, the cheese, and the two other ingredients mixed in. And I'll let you guys know what it is. Then the sausage stuffer comes out. We're making brats, and these things are amazing. I got my dog here, my deer tracking dog. Anytime there's venison out, she smells it instantly, comes in the kitchen and starts begging. I'm telling you, man, as fast as you can, oh, there goes a piece on the ground and the dog's right in to scoop it up. As fast as you can feed this thing, it'll grind the meat. That's why you need the foot pedal, because when you can't keep the meat in there, you have to stop, get some in there, because you don't want to run it empty. Get it stocked up and then back on the foot pedal. I just try to do a random mix of the pork and the venison, because like I said, there's 20 pounds of venison and only five pounds of pork. We're gonna put two and a half pounds of the sharp cheddar cheese in here. You can put more, you can put less, you can put none, but it just makes this so good. That literally took me like a minute or two to grind up 25 pounds of meat. This is the one and a half horsepower number 32 Cabela's Carnivore Grinder. I'll be honest with you, if I had to rebuy this grinder, I'd buy one or two sizes down because this thing is just so fast and I mean, you just can't keep up with it. So I would buy a size or two down from this, but if you got people that can feed this, if you're working as a team when Rachel or the kids are helping me, we can just feed this thing as fast as we can. We can do a whole deer worth a burger in minutes. 
where with that little Gander Mountain one that I used to have, or people say, oh, I use my KitchenAid. Like, yeah, that's great. If you want to spend an hour or two grinding up a deer, this thing does it in minutes. And like I said, this one's bigger than I probably needed, but I love it. So there it is, 20 pounds of venison, five pounds of pork butt. Two and a half pounds of sharp cheddar cheese. We're gonna add that in. We'll mix that all up. I've got a meat mixer. I'll be honest, I'd rather just do it by hand. If I had a bigger meat mixer, that carnivore grinder, you can get one that hooks to that. I'd love that. It's an electric meat mixer. The one I have, I think it's 10 or 15 pounds and you crank it by hand. It's more work cleaning it up than it's worth. I'd rather just mix it by hand. When I'm working on this stuff, I use these gloves. They're from AutoZone. They're a little bit thicker. They've got some grip on them. I don't know that that matters. But when I'm working with cold deer or cold venison, cold meat, these things keep your hands a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna mix that cheese in, get the pork and the venison all mixed together. One thing I add to this mix, green peppers. It's so nice having kids who can drive. Granted, two of my kids are in college, they could drive for a while, but they're gone now. Nate can drive. So he was coming home from wrestling practice the other day. And I was like, hey, Nate, stop at the store and grab me some green peppers. So he did, because this is something I needed that I didn't have. I had some onions, which is the other thing we're gonna add to this. Onions and green peppers, what kind of bratwurst would they go in? I'm gonna let you know but we're gonna slice these up into little pieces. Dice them up, throw them into the mix. We're gonna do the same with onions. They're just yellow onions, we'll throw that in. So, so far we've got venison, we've got pork butt, green peppers, onions, cheddar cheese, and then the seasoning, which is what makes this magic happen. So let's get the onions diced up, thrown in there, then the seasoning will get mixed in. These things are gonna be so delicious. All right, I got all the onions and green peppers mixed in. Before I took the gloves off, I took the time, cleaned up the grinder a little bit. I found that trying to make a video doing this, you go through a lot of gloves because I have to take them off every time I touch the camera equipment and they're hard to take off and put back on. So I'm going through quite a, quite a few more than I normally would. But this is what makes it, man. These, like I said, are the best brats and I'm gonna make them non-brats. I'll show you what I'm talking about later. It's a Philly cheesesteak brat, 290B. It's made by PS Seasoning. I get this stuff from Kent Butcher Supply. It's in Grand Rapids. A girl I went to high school with actually works there and they have an online store so you can just order on there. They have this, they have so many different seasonings stuff to do your stuff you know whether it be jerky or sausage or whatever it's the ps seasoning philly cheesesteak brat mix and i'm telling you this stuff is so good so i'm just going to pour this in i've got a couple bottles of water because i might need it to keep the consistency good for when i start stuffing the brats i like to put in some now this has your onion dehydrated onion and green pepper in it but i like to add the extra so i put about half in and then I'll mix it and then I'll put the rest in and mix that all up. The seasoning smells so good too. You have to mix this for quite a bit to get everything nice and mixed so you get an even flavor. And ultimately, I'll probably end up picking an electric mixer one day, but that handheld one, or the hand crank one that I bought, it was just too small. So I just prefer to do it like this. All right, we've got the sausage stuffer all set up. I've talked about this in other videos, but if you make sausage, snack sticks, bratwurst, whatever it is, and you use the auger on your grinder, I did that for years, I regret not buying a sausage stuffer sooner. This thing makes it so much nicer, so much faster, and so much easier. 
like I picked this up at a garage sale, but had I not, and knowing how much nicer this makes the process, I would just go buy one at the store. They're that much nicer than the auger fed feeders, which I used for years, and I regret having spent so much time making sausage that way. I just use these. They're the Calogen 33 millimeter Cabela's brand casings. I don't really do the natural animal stuff because my family thinks they look gross and they don't want to eat it then. So I'm going to get this stuffer loaded up, make a couple of brats, and then make non brats with this stuff. All right, like I mentioned, I'm going to add a little bit of water. I just checked the consistency and it's a little bit thick for what I like. So not too much water, just a little bit. Get that mixed in and get stuffing. Oh, and that's what the dogs are here for when I drop a piece. When I used to make bratwurst, I would make them the length and twist it and then twist the next one, twist the next one. I don't do that anymore. I just fill this casing, try to get it, you know, fairly firm, but not too firm or it's going to burst. I put a little hole in the end there so it can push the air out. And then I just fill it. You don't need to twist it every single time. You can just do this and then cut them to length, put them in a freezer bag, vacuum seal freezer bag, and they're ready to go next time you need them. You can cook them straight from frozen, throw them on the grill. And like I said, these things are so good. All right, so I've got some brats made, and now I'm gonna make non-brats. What do I mean by that? I'm just gonna put it in these meat bags. I used to vacuum seal all my burger, all my ground sausage, and these things are so much nicer, so much faster, easier, and they work well in the freezer. I've never had anything get freezer burnt in them. Granted, the meat doesn't last that long in our house, but I'm gonna let you know why I'm gonna do this instead of making all bratwurst with this Philly cheesesteak. It's amazing. All right, so why would I go through all the hassle of making this bratwurst mix and then not make it all bratwurst? The answer is because this Philly cheesesteak stuff is so good. I like to just put it in these bags, one pound bags and two pound bags. I use this to make omelets, to make loaded fries, to make anything, nachos. You can make Philly cheese nachos. Or sometimes I just make them into burger patties because we have burger buns or we have bread and we want that and we don't have any hot dog buns so we're not gonna make bratwurst. It's so versatile, it's so good, and I've run into people that are like, oh, I don't like bratwurst when I make them, and I'll make the same thing in a burger patty or put it on some loaded fries, and they're like, oh my goodness, that's amazing, yet they refuse to try the bratwurst because they don't like bratwurst. So here you just stuff these bags right to about the pound mark, twist it, and tape it. That's simple way easier than vacuum sealing all my burger like I used to do. It would take hours because it's like 20, 30 seconds in between cycles on my vacuum sealer. And this literally is just so fast and easy. You stuff it with the sausage stuffer, tape it with the taper, and you're good to go. Stuffing it in there pushes all the air out of the bag so you don't have air in there. Like I said, I don't twist these brats anymore. I just cut them like this and then I'll vacuum seal them. If 
if you guys watch hard working man enough you know i love cooking outside we process our own wild game i like making snack sticks jerky summer sausage all that stuff bratwurst breakfast sausage like making this stuff yourself you have quality control you know how good it is you know what's in it and you can make stuff that's just delicious like if you haven't checked the uh cherry pepper jack snack stick video out check that out those are the best snack sticks i've ever made these are the best bratwurst i've ever made and non-bratwurst i mean you got philly cheesesteak you got burgers you got omelets loaded fries all that stuff if you don't know what i'm talking about with the loaded fries i'll make a video doing that this summer they are so good always a smash hit and so easy to make 